the nervous system is the information network that's necessary to make all of the body work together. Muscles don't contract until they get the message to contract, which comes from the brain going through the spine, out through the peripheral nerves, and then to the muscles. We have the central nervous system, which is the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerves. And then you have what we call the peripheral nervous system, and that's attached to the central nervous system. It's smaller nerves as they leave the spine and go out to the edges of the body, so the fingertips and the toes and basically everywhere. Multiple sclerosis happens to attack just the central nervous system, so the brain, the spinal cord, or the optic nerves. But obviously that can impact pretty much any part of your body. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease where the immune system, which is supposed to be your body's armed forces, protecting you from infections and things on the outside. But in the case of MS, it gets its orders confused, and instead of attacking germs and things like that, it attacks the brain, the spine, and the optic nerves. So because the central nervous system have connections to the entire body, the symptoms that are caused by multiple sclerosis are very different depending on what part of the central nervous system is being attacked by the immune system at any given time. Initially, for most people, it presents as a sudden, relatively sudden onset of neurologic symptoms. That could be loss of vision, it could be trouble walking, it could be numbness, and it's very much a change from what normal uh, should be. Um, and when we look at the person's MRI, we find inflammation and that's the immune system causing damage. If left to itself, MS tends to just become what we call progressive, which just means people slowly get worse over many years, and that is something we want to avoid. In the early 1990s, there were no treatments for multiple sclerosis. Zilch, nada, not a thing. Now we have over 20 different immunotherapies that can control the disease. And while they're not cures, they can effectively put the disease into remission for many, many years. And so the first changes in MS are most likely immunologic changes. And Yale as a immunologic powerhouse is uniquely suited to do this kind of deep inquiry into these patients' immune systems and, and tease out what's gone wrong. The frontier for multiple sclerosis is on both ends. First, find it earlier, treat it earlier. Um, maybe we can prevent it. But also, for the patients who have lived with the disease for many years, how can we improve their lives, improve their level of function? Um, so I think both, on both ends of the spectrum, there's room for improvement.